Shanti. With these ancient prayers for peace and my special love for His Excellency Vishal Mehta, I reach out to Odo. I know personally I very much wanted to be there, but I'm there in spirit and celebrate this momentous moment. I've seen Vishal as a child and then grow into a dynamic youth and a successful businessman. But overall, he's become a proud Indian citizen. And I feel extremely elated on this day when so many of your friends, officers, ministers who have come together to be a part of this moment where you are becoming a diplomat. While life changes and the world changes, with great power comes great responsibility. Especially for the country you represent, and in a country that you call home. I want to emphasize one fact that His Holiness Pramukh Swami Maharaj has always said, that if you keep focusing on yourself, then you gain nothing. But when you focus on the idea that in the joy of others lies our own, then you gain everything. As a diplomat, your responsibility will be to create as much goodness as you can to as many people as you can in as many ways as you can as long as you can. So to develop relationships and to sustain the spirit of goodness we must all base everything that we do on three things. Truth, transparency, and trust. While all of us value truth, how transparent are we? And when you are truthful and transparent, can you generate trust? So your goal in life should become the one that generates goodness and trust in everyone that you meet. In the words of Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, whom he said he learned something from His Holiness Prabhu Swami, whom he called his guru, that he always focused on, what can I give? Can I give a simple smile to the child to make his world a little better? Can I give a little guidance to the youth to make his life better? Can I contribute to the nation and make the nation smile? So Vishal, from today onwards, of course, you are a son of somebody, a father of somebody, a husband to somebody, a friend to so many, and a colleague of somebody. But now you represent a nation. So bring a smile to that nation and make India proud and all your family members proud. I pray for your health and your future and all the great things that are in store in times to come. My deepest prayers and may all the blessings of the world be upon you and all the people who are present at this moment. Jai Swami. Ladies and gentlemen of our office, Pankaj Transcode. The grand unveiling of our office, ladies and gentlemen. of the Republic of Djibouti in Mumbai, Maharashtra. I would like to welcome you all to the new office of the Republic of Djibouti in Mumbai, Maharashtra. 
I would also like, it is an honor for me today to welcome and receive the Ambassador of Djibouti in India, His Excellency Isa Abdullahi Osar. Yeah, okay, so now he is going to open. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, for His Excellency Vishal Mehta Sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to begin by thanking our esteemed guests present on the dais, Sri Sarvananda Swanavanji, Sri E. Mudhidharanji, His Excellency Isa Abdullahi, Sri Vinod Tavdeji, Sri Ashish Jahanji, diplomats, other dignitaries, family and friends for being here today. I am deeply honored to accept the appointment as the Honorary Consul of the Republic of Djibouti, for which I would like to express my gratitude to President Ismail Omar Kule, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Muhammad Ali Yusufi, Ambassador of Djibouti in India, for their confidence in entrusting me with the important responsibility. I would also like to thank the Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India, for accepting my appointment as Honorary Consul of Djibouti in Maharashtra, Mumbai. My very first visit to Djibouti was in the year 2013. And that was a time, like many of you, even I used to call it the Djibouti. So the pronunciation is Djibouti and not the Djibouti. So that is the time I first went to Djibouti to explore business potential and business partners. It has been 11 years I have been doing successful business with Djibouti with frequent trips to Djibouti. I have witnessed the transformation from an emerging regional player to becoming a hub along one of the world's busiest shipping lines. Djibouti has established itself as a major transshipment and refueling station. Furthermore, despite being the third smallest country in mainland of Africa, the country play a crucial role in maintaining international peace by hosting eight military bases: United States of America, United Kingdom, China, Japan, Germany, Italy, Spain. Building on our discussion of Djibouti, strategic importance and dynamic growth, I would like to draw your attention to four key sectors that I have identified for potential investment. Logistics, construction, healthcare, and trading houses. First, to my colleagues in transport and shipping industry, I extend a warm invitation to explore the vast opportunity awaiting in Djibouti. Djibouti has space for everyone, road transport, rail operators, shipping lines, feeder operator, and air cargo players. For construction sectors, Djibouti faces a critical housing shortage. To our esteemed builders and developers present here, the opportunity for impactful and profitable venture in Djibouti, construction sectors are immense. Your investment will not only yield return, but also significantly contribute to the social development of Djibouti. Turning to healthcare, Djibouti rely on foreign assistance for significant medical treatment, underscore a pressing need for enhancing healthcare facility. Trading houses, a uh, lot of exporter friends and big traders are right here. Uh, if you have your physical presence in Djibouti, you do not only have business of Djibouti, you control or you can have access to Somalia, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Yemen, and this is a big market. Sanjeevji will witness and guarantee that having a setup there, it makes such a big difference. So I request others to give a thought for having your own setup in Djibouti. As an honorary council, I will do my best to assist and protect the citizen of Djibouti who reside visit or do business in Maharashtra. I am aware of the challenges and responsibility that comes with the position. And I assure you, I will perform my duties with dedication, integrity, and professionalism. I will always try to uphold the dignity and reputation of both India and Djibouti 
to serve our mutual interest and value. Thank you. Namaskar. Good evening to all of you present here today. Respected Honorable Sri B. Murli Granji, Minister of State for External Affairs and Parliamentary Affairs, Government of India. Respected His Excellency Mr. Asuhiji, Ambassador of Republic of Djibouti to India. Respected Honorable Vinod Tawariji, Minister General Secretary, Bharati Janta Party. Respected Sri Vishal P. Mehtaji, Honorary Consuls of the Republic of Djibouti to India. Respected Sri Asis Sohanji, MD and CEO, Mr. Stock Accents. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you with immense pride and enthusiasm as we gather here today to commemorate a significant moment in our diplomatic relationship. The appointment of Sri Vishal Mehtaji as the Honorary Council for Djibouti in Mumbai marks a crucial step towards fostering stronger ties between our nation. India and Djibouti share a history that extends beyond geographical boundaries. Djibouti is strategically located at the crossroads of Africa and the Middle East, plays a pivotal role in international trade and commerce. As we recognize Sri Mehtaji's new role, it becomes paramount to understand the immense potential that lies in the collaboration between our two nations. Historical links, cultural affinities, and people-to-people -people contacts between India and Djibouti has existed long before India's independence in 1947 and Djibouti's independence in 1977. The port of Adulis was the hub of maritime trade where Indian seafarers have flocked trading in species and silk for gold and ivory. The Honorary Council of India has been functioning in Djibouti since 1969. Djibouti opened its embassy in New Delhi in 2004. Due to these long-standing historical links and India's contribution in the field of education and training, especially for the Somali speaking population, many of whom have been taught by Indian teachers. Djibouti is keen to improve its bilateral relation with India, especially in the area of capacity building. Djibouti has always extended extraordinary support to India in the past. Djibouti's strategic location at the entrance to the Red Sea position it as a gateway to African market. India with its robust industrial base, technological progress and skill workforce stands to benefit significantly from Djibouti's unique position. The potential for bilateral trade is vast, offering a gateway for Indian businesses to access the African contingent, continent and vice versa. As the Minister of Port, Shipping and Waterways, I am acutely aware of the critical role that maritime connectivity plays in global trade. Djibouti, with its ports and maritime infrastructure, offers India an invaluable partner in our quest for enhanced shipping routes and maritime cooperation. Our collaboration can unlock new avenues for efficient and cost-effective trade. The importance of this integration of Honorary Council will be a valuable part of the worldwide network of the Djibouti. They will open doors for business and facilitate visits, assist in natural disaster emergencies and evacuation. They also open doors for business owners enabling the business community to take advantage of unique opportunities as well as in helping 
to solve the matters between devotee community and government of India. I encourage businesses from both nations to explore these opportunities and force enduring partnership. African countries and India have enjoyed close cooperation and multi-sectoral partnership and capacities, politics, security, economics, science and technology, human resource development as well as social, cultural and other areas of mutual interest. They adopted a framework for cooperation which will strengthen their partnership in all areas for mutual benefit. During the G20 presidency under the global leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister Srinanda Modiji, G20 formally admitted African Union as a permanent member of G20. Prime Minister Modi met giving voice to the Global South, a centerpiece of the G20 summit. In conclusion, I would like to extend my heartiest congratulations to Sri Vishal P. Mahtaji on his appointment as the Honorary Council for Djibouti in India. This signifies a bridge between our nation, a conduit for collaboration and testament to the enduring friendship between India and Djibouti. May this appointment pave the way for a new sector of cooperation, economic growth and shared prosperity. I express my Gratitude to all the distinguished guests present here today and ask you to actively participate in the exploration of these promising opportunities. I wish Sri Vishal P. Mahtaji and the entire team involved in this endeavor the very best in their important initiative. With this, I conclude. I am sorry that I had to leave now because of my engagement in Delhi. And I'm especially thankful to Vinod Chaurik also who has made me possible to come to this particular important event. And I am today as the, like, uh, I think today is the, today is the what? Fourth, yeah. Fourth day, like of the year 2024. So I wish a very, very happy and healthy, prosperous, New Year's 2024 to all of you present here. God bless you. Jai Hind. Subhanand Sonawalji, Honorable Union Minister for Ports, Shipping, Waterways and Ayush in absentia. Your Excellency, Mr. Abdullahi Asove, SA, Ambassador of Djibouti to India. Sri Vinod Tavdegi, National General Secretary, Bharti Agenda Party. Shri Ashish Chauhan, MD and CEO of the National Stock Exchange, Honorary Council Shri Vishalji Mehta, Ambassadors and members of the Diplomatic Court, Respected Dignitaries, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Namaskaram and a very good evening to all of you. I am delighted to be here today for the inauguration of the Office of the Honorary Council of Djibouti in Mumbai. At the outset, let me begin by congratulating Ambassador Abdullahi Asobi and the leadership of Djibouti for taking this momentous step towards further strengthening the warm and cordial ties between India and Djibouti. The ties between India and Djibouti date back prior to the independence of both nations. Riding on our historical linkages, and cultural affinities, both our nations have been able to forge a deep and close relation partnership at all levels, including political, administrative, entrepreneurial, and people-to-people -people ties. Friends, Djibouti's strategic location in the Horn of Africa, at the vital intersection of the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, makes it a crucial hub of international trade. India's partnership with Djibouti is based on our genuine desire to work together for each other's welfare and interests. This strengthening of the relationship has been an outcome of frequent and open engagement at all levels. I have fond memories of my own visit 
to Djibouti in September 2022. I was overwhelmed by the warmth and affection showered upon me during the visit. I got an opportunity to have wide-ranging discussions on topics of bilateral and multilateral interests with the Prime Minister Mr. Abdul Khadar Kamil Mohammed and the Foreign Minister Mr. Mahmoud Ali Yusuf. The partnership between our two nations has enabled us to deliver results and bring tangible benefits to our peoples in accordance with their wishes, aspirations and priorities. The assistance rendered by the government and people of Djibouti in the evacuation of Indians and foreigners from Yemen during Operation Rahat is worthy of appreciation. I also express my gratitude towards the government of Djibouti for the continued support extended to the visit of Indian naval ships calling on the port of Djibouti for Operation Stern Road. I am happy to note that more than 1,000 Indian nationals are working in Djibouti in various fields and are being well taken care of by the government of Djibouti. Friends, India's approach to partnership Djibouti is based on the requirements of Djibouti and focuses on capacity building, human resource development and creation of infrastructure to meet its development needs. India always strives for Africa's voice to be heard in the international arena and for the betterment of the lives of the people of Africa. Guided by the inspiring leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modiji, the African Union was admitted as a full-time member of the G20 under India's presidency. We also hosted two editions of the Voice of Global South Summit in January and November last year, where leaders from the countries of Global South convened and collectively resolved to work towards a better future. I note with appreciation the participation of Djibouti's Minister for Economy and Finance, Mr. Elias Mosa Dawale, and Foreign Minister Mr. Mohammed Ali Yusuf in the summit. Our development and economic partnership has been an essential part of our relationship. During my visit, I had the opportunity to visit the Mahatma Gandhi Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurship that was built with Government of India's assistance. I was extremely, it was extremely satisfied to see the Djiboutian leadership happy with this center and India's assistance in establishing it. Under the ITEC program, India is extending support to Djibouti for capacity building. Similarly, ICCR scholarships are extended to Djiboutian students for pursuing higher education in India. So far, around 100 students from Djibouti have benefited from ICCR scholarships, including the last batch of 15 that left for India in September 2023. 12 Djiboutian diplomats have also been trained so far in the Sushma Swaraj Institute of Foreign Service. Friends, I am confident that the appointment of Sri Vishal Mehta as the Honorary Council will give further impetus to bilateral trade and open up new avenues of collaboration between India and Djibouti. Medical tourism, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, IT, digital infrastructure and renewable energy are all potential areas where India can contribute immensely to the growth and development of Djibouti. In conclusion, I would like to extend my heartiest congratulations to Mr. Vishal Mehta for taking up this new responsibility and also wish him and his team all the very best for all future endeavors. Thank you. Namaskar. Honorable Minister V. Muligaramji, His Highness Abdilia Osavaji, Ashish Chawanji, my dear friend Vishalji, and distinguished guests. 
as uh, Ashiji and I was discussing, we are not the people of external affairs nor internal affairs. We are no affairs people. And uh, frankly speaking, though I am here being introduced as a General Secretary, National General Secretary of the largest political party of the world, Bhatia Janata Party, which is, uh, I will not say ruling, which is serving 70% of the population of India through government. We are government in so many states. But we serve, we don't rule. But I am not as a general secretary here. Neither I am expert of international geopolitics and other things. But a true friend of Vishal Mehta, I am present here and the person, an individual which I have seen in Vishal Mehta's working, that inspired me to request Sarvananji and Murli Dharanji to come for this function because uh, I was the education minister in Maharashtra since 14 to 19 and I know our education system only think of IQ, intelligent quotient. We have changed it now, new policy has changed everything and we are also starting thinking of emotional quotient, EQ. For now many years, 70 years, we were working only on IQ of the students. We were not working off EQ, emotional quotient of the students. But I don't know from where Vishal Mehta got that emotional quotient. Because still in my phone, Vishal Mehta's number has been saved as Metropolis Lab Contact Person Vishal Mehta. He was very much active in Corona period and my introduction was with him in that time and I would have just called him and in the next 24 hours people would have reached to that house, get the test, uh, test done immediately, treatment was started and we could save a lot number of lives also because of that. This emotional quotient which Vishal got, that has made me his good friend and I think uh, we always speak of CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility, but during Corona, Vishal has shown individual social responsibility, ISR, he kept his business aside and worked for the people and I think we should give you a big applause of class for the work for the ISR not for the CSR and I wish him all the best for his future career. Dhaneva Bharat Mata Kijay. Jibuti, my friend Sri Pinunji Tavre, uh, we have all gathered to felicitate my friend Sri Mehta. It's an honor and pleasure to be in front of you, all of you. It's a unique day in a way where one amongst us is now becoming a consul. And it's a matter of pride and privilege that all of us have today that we know Sri Mehta. In a way, Djibouti is a, a small country but has a long history with India. There are cultural affinities. And since long, literally ages, Indian seafarers and traders from Gujarat and Kerala frequented the port of Adulis for trading in spices and silk as well as for gold and ivory. The Honorary Council of India of Djibouti started functioning in Djibouti in 1969 while Djibouti opened its embassy in New Delhi in 2004. India opened its resident mission in Djibouti in 2019. In September 22, Minister of State for External Affairs, 
Sri Murligan himself visited Djibouti and I am delighted that he is here today. Government of India conferred its second highest civilian honor, the Padma Vibhushan, on the President of the Republic of Djibouti, Mr. Ismail Omar Gule, in March 2019. We are becoming partners, and I think the relationship between both the countries are improving uh, with all the help that our Minister of Action and Affairs. Sri Murli uh, and of course the ambassador himself uh, are giving. With that, I once again thank uh, the Honorable Ambassador, Honorable Ambassador and also Honorable Minister, my friend Sri Tawre and all of you for being here and felicitating uh, Sri Mehta. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2024 in the best auspices with the opening of this office of the Honorary Consulate for the Republic of Djibouti to India. I would like to first of all to congratulate my friend Vishal Mehta for extreme energy to foster the relationship between me, India, and Djibouti. He has been a very big help. I would like to also to thank His Excellency, the Minister, Mr. Muri Karan, for visiting us during this opening of the Office of the Honorary Consulate of the Republic of Djibouti. May I also take the floor to thank His Mr. Ashish Chohan, Mr. Shri Sarba Sonowal, and Honorable Shri Vinu Taude for their presence at this opening of the Office of the Honorary Consulate of the Republic of Djibouti. And last but not least, dear guest, I would like to thank you for your presence to this very important event that will certainly foster the relation between the Republic of Djibouti and India. Now I would like to thank His Excellency Prime Minister Modi for his tremendous action to support Africa to enter in the very close club of the G20. We know and we always knew that India has been the friend of Africa. Now we have the proof and we certainly ex expect more from this relation between Africa and Djibouti. Africa is the country of opportunity. Africa is the country of future. Africa is the country where you need to go to conquer the world because Africa is an unconquered continent. But to conquer Africa, you need a safe place. You need a safe country to establish yourself. And believe me, Djibouti is that safe place to use as an operational base to conquer Africa. Certainly that we don't have resources. Certainly that we are a hot country. Certainly that we are a small market. But we do have certainly a very good geostrategical position. We do have an open hand, and I'm sure that my friend here, Mr. Nani Kotari, who has been working with Djibouti and been honorary consulate of India to Djibouti, will not say the opposite. Djibouti very much welcome India, and mostly very much welcome Indian investors. Let me give you an example. I used to go to school with Indian students since my childhood. Up to now, we are still friends, and even our children are still friends. Why? Because in Djibouti, there is a huge community of India. But unfortunately, when I came back to serve my country after my studies, I have noticed that India is not very much present. 
Djibouti to take the opportunity. There is a huge opportunity to seize and the whole world is going to preserve Djibouti. And I'm, I'm here to invite investors from India to come to Djibouti to invest and then to conquer the African market. And I will tell you why the reason. The reason is that Djibouti is the number second best port in Sub-Saharan Africa. Djibouti has a dollar, has its currency linked to the dollar since 1949. That means that the dollar never fluctuated. Djibouti is the only country where you can invest, and if you're not happy, you can go back to your country with your money completely in foreign currency. You will not find that in many, much countries in Africa. Djibouti is the place which where lands 15 submarine international cables, and we own nine of them. So for connectivity, no problem. Djibouti has the biggest free zone in Africa. Djibouti also offers you and proposes you to come to rent a warehouse in Djibouti in the free zone, and then to re-export your product to Africa under the level of made in Djibouti, and you will, be, you will take benefit of the free trade agreement that Djibouti has with many African countries, especially Comesa countries. So we have to make sure, we will discuss later in the offices of all the opportunity. I would just like to say thank you for your presence, for the opening of this office of honorary consulate. The purpose of this office is to facilitate whatever you need from Djibouti, and I'm sure that my friend here, Mr. Mehta, is here to facilitate everything. Well, thank you very much, and I wish you again a happy new year. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have just witnessed a historic moment in the history of our country. The inauguration of the first ever office of honorary consulate of the Republic of Djibouti in Maharashtra, with none other than Mr. Vishal Mehta as our honorary consul. <laughs> India and Djibouti's relationships date back centuries due to trade and maritime links across the Indian Ocean. Over the years, the relationships of the country have just grown. India has offered to improve the connectivity in Djibouti by funding the Adiz Ababa and Djibouti railway station expansion and has also provided medical support during COVID-19 in the form of medical supplies and COVID-19 vaccines. At the same time, Djibouti has lent a helping hand in 2015 when India faced one of the most crucial crises during Operation Rahat by ensuring that all the Indian citizens are evacuated safely from war prone Yemen. Finally, I'd like to conclude by saying that we are all really excited to witness the wonderful work you will do as the newly appointed Honorary Consul of the Republic of Djibouti in strengthening the ties between these two great nations, Djibouti and India. And finally, and most importantly, we all send in our best wishes as you're about to embark on this new journey of your life that you once started as a director of a company to a dad and today officially as a diplomat. Thank you. Okay, nice questions? Uh, I will ask you questions. Yes. Yeah, I will yes. Go on. Sir, uh, Mr. Vishal is now a honorary council of Djibouti. Uh, and an office has been established in Mumbai as well. But, uh, what does this mean for the two countries, sir? It will certainly foster the relationship with the two countries, especially with Mr. Bishal will be the extension of the embassy of Djibouti in Maharashtra. So that means that he has a huge responsibility in India and in Djibouti because he will tie the relation between these two countries. That means that he has larger uh, shoulder to foster or support this burden and to foster all these relations.
and in addition, in addition, I would like to say that this is the first time that uh, we are inaugurating something official with that size. So we are expecting that as a businessman, Mr. Vishal Mehta will be uh, very keen to show the way to Indian investors and to invest in the Republic of Djibouti. And he is the best person to translate the needs of the Indians and the needs of the Republic of Djibouti and bring those needs together because he is at the same time a businessman and a honor recruiter. So we are fully confident in the capacity of Mr. Bishal, Mr. Meta, that uh, in addition of being a close friend, we are very sure that he will foster the relation between the two countries, no matter our brotherly relation privately. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bishal, um, what kind of change do you expect moving forward? For, uh, for the economic and political relations of both countries? Uh, I would stress upon the economical relationship because I, I come from an absolute business background. And, and luckily, the, the beauty is that Djibouti is all about shipping and port. Our business of cruise ship sailing is all about shipping and port. And Mumbai, Navasheva and Mumbai port is all about shipping and port. It seems like we were meant to be. Yeah? So this is a place where we will definitely uh, make sure our Indian friends colleagues from the industry gets a complete access to Djibouti investment. We will show them the vision 2035 that Djibouti is intending. And if you ask me what do you see about Djibouti, I honestly see, you will see Singapore. So Djibouti will be Singapore of Africa. And it's not too far. It's just happening. It's just happening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Djibouti is an African nation where there are a lot of growth and many people who work there. आज मुंबई के लिए भी एक सुनहरा दिन है जहां पर श्री विशाल मेहता को आज जिबूती ने अपना मुंबई के लिए कॉन्सुल जनरल बनाया है जिसके वजह से जो मुंबई के लोग जिबूती के साथ ट्रेड करते हैं या तो वहां पर प्रवास करते हैं अफ्रीका में तो उनको एक सहायता होगी और विशाल मेहता जी जो हम सब जानते हैं एक अच्छे उद्योजक हैं लॉजिस्टिक्स में काम करते हैं और अच्छा नाम भी कमाया था समाज सेवा में भी उन्होंने आज एक तरह से कंसुल जनरल बन करके जिबोती के लिए भी अच्छा काम करेंगे और भारत के लिए भी अच्छा काम करेंगे ऐसी प्रभु से प्रार्थना और बेस्ट विशेष देखिए बहुत खुशी की बात है दो कंट्री के लिए विशाल मेहता मेरे खास दोस्त एक सोच का नाम विशाल मेहता विश्वास का नाम विशाल मेहता मोहब्बत का नाम विशाल मेहता ये मैं समझता हूँ अफ्रीकन कंट्री के लिए जिबूटी के लिए बहुत बड़ी बात है कि एक ऐसा व्यक्ति उन्होंने चुना हमने सुना था कि उस कंट्री के अंदर हीरा मिलता है और वह हीरे की खदान है लेकिन इन्होंने महाराष्ट्र में आकर एक विशाल मेहता जैसा एक हीरा चुना ये अपने आप में एक बड़ी बात है उस कंट्री के लिए बहुत बड़ी बात है उस कंट्री के अंदर जितने आज यहाँ पे जो लोग महाराष्ट्र से नामवर लोग जो बैठे हुए थे ये सारे लोग अगर वहाँ पहुँच गए तो वो कंट्री दुबई होने में ज़्यादा वक्त नहीं लगेगा ये अपने आप में एक बड़ी बात है और एक ऐसा व्यक्ति जो छोटे से बिजनेस से शुरू करता है और एक देश के और दुनिया के एक कोने पे पहुँचता है ये अपने आप में एक बड़ी बात है मैं बहुत बहुत बधाई दूँगा विशाल जी को कि आप इसी तरीके से तरक्की की अल्लाह उनको खुश रखे आबाद रखे कभी जिंदगी में गम का नाम ना है और ऐसी कंट्री के अंदर आप काम कर रहे हैं मुझे लगता है कि इंडिया से बहुत सारे लोग बहुत सारे बिजनेसमैन हर तरीके के लोग जाएंगे और उस कंट्री के अंदर अच्छे लोग जाएंगे और उस कंट्री का भी तरक्की होगी थैंक यू थैंक यू so oh, i feel great i feel uh, that zubuti is quite lucky to have vishal mehta ji as the honorary consul because he's a lovely person he's a very helpful person he's very connectable and from last 11 years i know he's doing business with zubuti so i'm sure uh, this uh, is going to be a milestone ahead for 2024 for zubuti and for india wishing vishal mehta all the best and success in his life in whatever way he does thank you so much i know him since more than 10 years now 
and I am President of Steel Users Federation of India and uh, I wish him all the good luck and the best wishes. I think uh, today has been an historic day uh, that, uh, you know, he is the council general. And uh, I believe, you know, we are in very safe hands. So India and Djibouti ties will be much more stronger now. And trade will prosper. I'll show you. Well, it, it, it always means that, you know, you are uh, trying to enhance trade and commerce and whatever issues are there between the two countries that can be resolved uh, easily and it is win-win for both the countries. And, and for that you need a very proactive person, a very knowledgeable person, very grounded person and that is what we start with. Thank you very much. Yeah, I feel great. It's I think Vishal has the potential uh, for exploring the business opportunities for India and as well as for Djibouti. My best wishes to Vishal and for our country. Thank you. Long since since in last 20 years, and Vishal is a good friend of mine. And first of all, myself is Vinesh T. Mehta. I am the president of Farm as well as chairman emirates of the farm. Right now, I congratulate to Vishal Excellency, to Vishal Mehta, and it's a proud and pride moment for us because he's doing very well job and it is very proud moment for his, because he's a Gujarati. And he's a first of all Gujarati people who has made this diplomat. So I very good, uh, feel very proud and proud moment for this. And happy and congratulations to Vishal, His Excellency, Vishal Pizza. Thank you so much.